comes dismissive materialism in our society, this, this thing that claims to be science, even though it's actually scientism, and says, you know, all this religion and spirituality stuff is a lot of nonsense. What happened to the meaning? Oh, the meaning? Well, a zillion years ago, a bunch of molecules bumped into each other after the Big Bang, and after they'd bumped long enough, some of them got together and reproduced, and after they bumped into each other for a few more zillion years, you're here. And it doesn't mean anything because there's no inherent meaning in the universe, and so you die. Doesn't mean anything either. That, that's an extreme interpretation of materialistic and scientific ideas, but it's an easy one to come to, and it does not make for healthy, flourishing people. That's the one that says, oh, you had a spiritual experience? Yeah, there was a, a little epileptic seizure going on in this part of your brain, and not good. So materialism, I can't show you the slide, but basically it's a doctrine that nothing exists except matter and other physical energies. And basically that gives you a universe where stuff sits there until various forces whack it, and then like billiard balls, they bounce off each other and things happen. Dismissive materialism, okay, now warning. Any of you philosophers in the audience, I'm not a philosopher. I'm not talking formal philosophy or being rigid about it. I'm talking about a psychological syndrome when I say dismissive materialism. It is a psychological set of habits and beliefs that say everything is material. We now know everything important, and therefore we can dismiss, we can ignore anything that seems to violate that, like spiritual experiences. We don't have to look at them, we don't have to investigate them, we can just throw them out automatically. Aha, uh -huh. the slides have returned. I'll go through them quickly to catch up to where I am now. Ah, uh, yes, the meaningless life, right? There's things you could do, there's information you could have, uh, it's all sort of meaningless, and then something comes along, some kind of illumination that organizes things for you and suddenly your information is all together, you have meaningful work to do and so forth. That's the th what religion used to provide and now materialism says, no, that's all a bunch of nonsense. I often illustrate uh, what I call man in the street materialism with this slide of billiard balls. Reality is made of stuff and it lies there until you whack it and then it bounces around for a while and stops. That's you. <laughs> Dismissive materialism essentially assumes that's the end of the story. Throw away all that nonsense about spiritual sort of stuff. Okay, so my end of materialism book was about dismissive materialism, right? If I'd want it to be real technical instead of calling it the end of materialism, which is a sexy title somebody else came up with right at the time of the big crash, so that made it uh, kind of fit well. I could have given it some technical title like psychological and scientific reflections on the psychological syndrome of dismissive materialism, and who would read a book like that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, you would read it, Kate. You're very good, right? But most, most of us would rather read something interesting. So as a, to as a total system of belief, dismissive materialism is arrogant. And as I say, it hurts people because it automatically dismisses their spiritual experience as having no possible validity. If you talk to a, a dismissive materialist and say, well, what about telepathy or something like that? Uh, they'll say it doesn't exist. If you can get them to, f if you can force them to admit that it probably exists, they'll say, oh, well, actually, uh, we'll explain that in material terms someday. This is what philosophers have called promissory materialism. It's not at all scientific because you can never disprove that they will explain it someday in whatever terms are. I think they will explain it in terms of little blue angels someday. You can't prove I'm wrong. Oh, that, that's faith. That, that's another kind of religion. That, that doesn't help us develop an evidence-based spirituality. So it's dismissive materialism or any isms of that sort, any 
belief system that thinks it's complete and keeps you from really paying attention to things in general is, is rough for you. Scientism is a particularly obnoxious form or a particularly destructive form of dismissive isms because it claims to be the scientific facts. Right? Uh, dismissive materialists don't say, I have this belief system and I'm not going to pay any attention to your spirituality. They say, science has proven that there's nothing to it. Well, who are you going to say that you're going, I mean, th those guys are physicists, they wear white coats, they have laboratories, you know, they operate on your brain. Who's going to argue with people like that? Scientism's particularly destructive. Okay, I've said Life without meaning is kind of dismal. We need something to make sense of it for us. We need a better idea than that life is a, is a meaningless event in a meaningless, purely material kind of universe. We need a spirituality. But that does not mean we should just make something up that makes us feel better. Uh, some people think we could do that. Uh, and then the, the drug companies think actually they'll handle the problem for us. So, in a short period of time, you know, you, you're kind of depressed because life doesn't mean anything, they'll have a pill for you in a short period of time. Okay, jumping to theme two, the spiritual is about realities. I could go on all day about this because I've spent a good deal of my life working on parapsychology and spiritual things and the like. Let me just say that there is enormous amounts of absolutely first-class evidence that human beings show the kind of psychic qualities we would expect a spiritual being to have. In Ed May's talk coming up after, later on this afternoon, I think he'll give you some excellent examples of some of the best kind of experimentation that showed that. Uh, if you want to see some more things like that, go to the Monday night film, Something Unknown is Doing We Don't Know What. I think it's a delightful title because it summarizes our knowledge so accurately. And you'll get to see various parapsychologists and consciousness researchers doing their thing. You get to see this cool thing in Larry Dossie's study, which I want something like that after seeing it. It says the same sort of thing. Um, or you can buy the DVD if you're not going to be here Monday night. Real interesting. And let's see, you're, this is a day of full disclosure. I have no monetary interest in that video, but I am shown several times in the film acting like I know what I'm talking about. Um, whether that scares you away or makes you want to do it and so forth. Anyway, this evidence that we have these qualities we would expect spiritual beings to have is reviewed at length in the End of Materialism book. There's several other good books doing this sort of thing. That's what's important. That's what makes us take developing an evidence-based spirituality seriously. It's not an abstract philosophy, it's about a reality. To give you the, the two-minute summary of what we know, there are five psychic phenomena for which I think we have so much evidence that it's not reasonable to deny that they exist. And that's telepathy, mind-to-mind -mind communication, clairvoyance, the direct perception of the physical world, precognition, the predicting the future accurately when there's no way you could logically infer it, psychokinesis, the direct effect of mind on matter, and psychic healing, the effect on biological system. The last two might be variations of the same thing, I'm not sure. Those are the big five that we can build a science on. And then there's some stuff I call, yeah, there's the big five there. Uh, and of course the psychic healing stuff gets us very much into the subtle energies realm. Then there's what I call the many maybes. These are psychic phenomena for which I think there's enough evidence that it would be foolish to say, no, we're probably fooling ourselves, these don't exist. But I and a lot of my colleagues would start getting kind of uncomfortable if you wanted to say, these definitely exist. And these are things like out-of-the-body experiences, near-death experiences, and, and various evidence for some kind of survival after death. After death communications, where a, a spirit tells you something you wouldn't have known otherwise, mediumistic communications, reincarnation evidence, and of course there are other things than that that I could put in the many maybes category, but the book was already too big. The main point 
is that these kind of psychic abilities are the kind of things we would expect spiritual beings to have. So again, developing an evidence-based spirituality is not just an exercise in philosophy or psychology, it's dealing with, with realities. So the conclusions in theme two is that dismissive materialism is simply inadequate. You know, I'm not against materialism as a way of working with things, right? If you say, you know, stuff is made out of chunks and certain laws operate and you find that what you want to investigate is explained very nicely by that, good, and keep expanding it. It's just when it makes this psychological slip into dismissive materialism, this psychological syndrome that you know everything and can ignore all the spiritual stuff, that's when it hurts people. So just materialism is inadequate as a complete theory of reality and people show qualities that we would associate with spiritual beings. Incidentally, I have not defined what I mean by spiritual, and I'm not going to, because part of what we need to do in developing an evidence-based spirituality is be able to define spiritual. But I think you have some idea what I mean.